bet you think this is a painting video, don't you? Well, it's not. I'm just, I am painting some boxes here, but uh, the uh, this video isn't really about painting boxes. Um, just a real quick video for me. I, what I wanted to do today was, uh, just show you something and, uh, and, um, talk to you a little bit. And this has to do with, uh, raising your own queens. Um, uh, and just a, a quick tip here. I, I kind of ran out of primer for my boxes. So what I did was I just mixed some of my regular paint uh, and I thinned it out with water. And uh, that should work just fine for uh, a light coat to prime my boxes, and then uh, and then I'll use a full uh, a full strength uh, coat for the second coat on here. For uh, but uh, I'll also because these are my honey supers, they'll be it'll be a yellow coat. But for the first coat, it'll just be a a nice white and it and what it'll do is uh, because I thinned it out it'll the paint will absorb in the wood real nice and it'll absorb it that way when the second coat goes on it'll adhere to the to the uh, first coat uh, but it won't suck in to the wood grain near as much and you won't have to spend as much money uh, to paint your boxes and it should last you a good 10 years uh, to do it But uh, no, today's act, today's video actually is um, I got this nice and wet. Today's video actually is is about uh, uh, raising your own queens, um, and that's something that that uh, that I'm going to be getting more into this year. And uh, I think everybody should strive for that if you're planning on having more than just a couple of hives. You know, if you if you're going to get up to around you know. Uh, 5, 10, 20 hives or more, uh, you should consider raising your own queens and producing a stock of bees for yourself because why not? Uh, if that's the cheapest route, why, why, why should you go out and pay uh, $35 a piece for queens when you could really just um, raise your own, use your own equipment, um, And your own stock of bees uh, from survivor stock from your own survivor stock and that's kind of key your survivor stock has survived your climate uh, as long as you know you didn't baby them too much and and whatnot uh, you know and and uh, maybe they've got some good mite resistance qualities maybe they're very gentle maybe they produced you really well uh, but they survived your winners and and uh, you know this applies to just about anywhere you live uh, more so for me up here in the north, um, you know, you get queens that are bred down in, down in, uh, oh, Georgia or Florida or California and, uh, you know, they're just not well suited, uh, to our environments, um, to our honey flows. And, uh, and I've talked to you all about that before, uh, but, uh, I've been talking to a couple of my friends from my beekeeping group. Recently, uh, we're kind of, you know, uh, you know, it's all we have to do right now in the winter time is to, uh, you know, kind of get ourselves pumped up by reading a lot and uh, new ways to do things. Um, and uh, there's a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, nice videos out there on queen rearing. If you're really into that, uh, Richard Noel uh, has a great little uh, tutorial video on queen rearing, uh, especially for us uh, hobbyist types. He's starting to get more into commercial, but that's okay. It, uh, it can uh, apply to you too. Um, you know, and he's a disciple of Michael Palmer uh, and his style of queen rearing. So uh, watching Michael Palmer video will also help you uh, in that regard. Let me get this over here before I spill it.
And uh, so getting getting really pumped up about that now. Uh, you know, a couple of the videos that I, I just saw today. Um, you know, there's a train of thought about, you know, the style of mating nuke you want to use in your, uh, in your operation. Uh, do you want to go with a, a mini mating nuke or uh, a two-frame mating nuke or a full-size nuke uh, that you just install queen cells in? And it's really entirely uh, based on what your, uh, what your overall um, goal really is. Um, in my line of thinking, uh, I like the two-frame mating nukes, which are full-size, which use full-size deep frames. Um, you know, I can put two frames in, I can put a, a scoop of bees in and a queen cell and let them be on their way and start raising a, a queen. It starts laying and then, uh, you know, after the queen starts laying for a bit and the, and the population builds slowly, I can install that two frame nuke into a four frame nuke and let them expand and give them a couple more frames and let them go and then add a, add a four frame to it you know so now I got uh, two four framers and then by fall maybe I have three four framers from that one one nucleus colony and that's something that I can overwinter and the following year I can take that four over four over four nuke and I can put it into a full size uh, hive make a full size hive out of it uh, or or make it a resource hive for making queens the following year. Um, and I can do that with all of mine. Now, if you're interested in, you know, selling queens, um, the, little, the little mating nukes, you know, they use very, very little resource, you know, and resource as far as bees, uh, size of frames. It's a small vessel, small amount of... Uh, of food needed to keep them going um, and uh, and then you just pick the queens off after they've uh, after they've come back mated and maybe laid for a little while you can't let them lay too long because those those small nucleus colonies um, the bees can expand in them too quickly and they can actually abscond on you if you're not if you're not really careful um, I'm just trying to pay attention to what I'm doing here, and I'm trying to get the the joints as uh, coated as possible here. But uh, but that's an option for you as well. Um, there's a couple of neat videos, uh, and I don't know who the guy was that uh, that came out with the video, but it's called a a Utah uh, nucleus colony. Um, it's got like 12 miniature frames of bees that he raised a queen in. Um, very, very simple design overall. Uh, there was another video, Jason Christman just came out and, and essentially what his box is, is called a, a draw nuke or something like that to that effect. And uh, essentially what it does is uh, it actually... Uh, you, you put it on over a queen excluder on a full-size hive, and the bees will go up and and uh, draw comb in these uh, these mini frames for you, and then you can use them anywhere. And then when you're when you're done, um, let's say you got you know uh, a mating nuke, and uh, you've picked the queens off of them, but you've left all this brood, and you're not not going to be breeding anymore. Well, you can put them in this box over a regular colony and on a queen excluder and the uh, let the brood hatch out and then you can store it and use it for the next year uh, so it's kind of an ingenious little system there uh, check out Jason's channel it's a pretty good video I think it just came out today uh, which is um, I don't even know today is the 18th of January somewhere around there I think um, so yeah this isn't really going on all that well here. I don't know why.
And I'll just touch up with a brush when I'm done here, and then I'll have to do the handles as well. I could have done the handles first, but... Uh... Another thing I wanted to show you, uh, something that may save you a little bit of money if you're interested in, in uh, you know, doing mating, uh, queen mating, or whatever, is, uh, you know, marking pens. Um, you know, marking queens allows you to spot them a lot faster, and I'm a big advocate of marking your queens uh, so that you can easily spot them in your hives. Uh, lets you know right away, um, you know, if you're searching for her to see if, you know, the, the geez, did the, did the colony uh, supersede her? Is she still there? Um, did she die? Or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, or, geez, I got to, you know, split this hive out, but I got to find that queen first. Or I got to do something to this hive. I got to find the queen first. Makes it a whole lot easier. And, um, you know, they have a queen marking um, code, I guess you can say, in the, in the beekeeping industry. And it's a color code. And it's by year. And uh, one, yeah, it's one in six. One in six, two in seven, three in eight, four in nine, and five in zero. That's what it is. Sorry about that. And uh, for, that's for the, for the years. And it starts with the color um, year, it, like uh, for one, that would be, uh, that would be white. Uh, one in, um, one in six. So years ending in one and six is white. Uh, the next year is yellow. That's uh, years uh, two and seven. And then red for three and eight. Uh, green for years uh, three and nine, or four and nine. And, uh, and then this year, which is 2020, uh, is blue for uh, five and zero. So, or uh, yeah, five and zero. So, and then it starts all over again. So you, you uh, each year you buy the corresponding paint marker pen to mark these queens. And, uh, geez, these pens are kind of expensive actually. Um, and I wanted to show you what it looks like. Here we go. These, uh, you know, this was for red for 2018 when I used it. Uh, these are called uh, Posca, and you can buy them on Amazon. They're about six bucks for this um, one marker. And you lose one, then you gotta buy another one for six bucks. Uh, so keep that in mind, and this will mark, you know, even if you're a commercial beekeeper, it should mark every freaking queen that you have uh, for the entire year because, I mean, all you're doing is putting a little tiny little dot on it. Uh, it really worked well. It's a paint marking pen, and uh, and this year is blue, and here it is, and I had bought one uh, a while ago, and uh, these are big, bulky to carry around, and, uh, you know, you're marking this little queen, and you've got this big marking pen. And then I found these, and these are also on Amazon, and these are CraftSmart uh, paint pens, and they're a lot skinnier, and uh, and they're the same same style, and you get and I don't even know how many uh, colors are in here. Let's see, there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 14 different colors in there. Uh, but you know, for almost every color that we use for the queens, there's actually two um, pens for each one, except for yellow um, and white. But uh, you know, red, it's got two different shades of red. Uh, so you will never run out of that. If you lose a pen, you always have a second shade of red to use. Uh, green, it's got two different shades of green on it. Um, and that's what I used this past year. Really worked really slick. And it's a skinnier pen. Um, and that's it. It's just a, it's a real skinny, skinny little marking pen. And you just use it and you just, you dab it a little bit, a little uh, paint comes out on a felt tip and you kind of kind of blot it, you know, maybe on a hide frame or something right before you mark it so you're not getting a big glob of paint on her or whatever. But 
this is a little skinnier and it's a lot easier to uh, you know paint the little mark on the little queen there um, there so it, it really is a nice little pen and the funny and the best thing about this is that this whole pack uh, cost me $14 uh, and I had Amazon Prime so it was free shipping but you know these pens here are six bucks a piece this whole thing was uh, $14 I noticed they did go up I think they're 16 now but I bet you can wait and find them on sale before spring comes uh, and uh, and buy a whole pack full of them but they're called craft smart paint pens and it's just a little tip and then the the the, the, uh, the pens that you don't use here uh, like uh, grays the silvers the the, the they got the uh, little silver two different silvers a gold and a black you know what use those for uh, you can you can double double use those. This is what I use it for. I make a uh, to mark my hive tops uh, with the uh, hive number on it, so that uh, so that I got it. And you know, what am I going to use the black black paint pen for? Uh, a marker wears off. I already tried a sharpie, and that wears off. But uh, these little paint pens, it's marked. It'll never come off. That's it. Um, but uh, this is a real short little video today. Um, like I said, I, uh, I'm just dabbling around the basement here on a Sunday, trying to get these painted up. I don't have a lot of room to work with, so I gotta kinda finagle my way around. So that's all I wanted to talk to you about. Um, you know, I, I really kind of want to know what you think is the best style or best way. And, I, and, I, and really, it's going to, it should depend on your style of beekeeping and what you, what you want as far as, uh, as raising queen bees. If you only need a few, you know, then, uh, then you might not even need a mating nuke at all. You, you can just use a regular nuke and uh, throw a queen cell in it uh, as you need it or walk away splits if you want to do that. But uh, if you want to get into to raising your own queens and producing your own, your own stock of cells, uh, you're always going to have to bring in uh, stock from the outside. There's no way around that uh, to avoid inbreeding. So... Uh, you know, get with a group of guys uh, that do the same thing, queen breeders in the local area. And when I say queen breeders, I just mean hobbyists just like you because the commercial guys, you know, if, if they're in it for, for the big time money, they're doing it down south. They're not doing it up here. And uh, always, always, always ask people if they're the commercial guy and they say that they're you know, oh yeah, my bees are local. Ask them where they where their bees over winter, and if they say anywhere but where you're at, then they're not local bees. Uh, so a lot of uh, uh, it's not dishonesty. I, I don't know, but it's uh, kind of the way they they package or market themselves uh, for their for their uh, beekeeping operations. Like I said, I bought packages last year. The guy said, these are Wisconsin bees. I mean, he was really touting it. And I'm like, there wasn't a single Wisconsin bee in there, man. These things were left for California in, in uh, or Florida in uh, um, October. And uh, they didn't come back until April. There wasn't a bee in that colony, including the queen that was raised uh, up here and overwintered not one bee so um, buyer beware as it were always ask the questions well that's it for this video 
Uh, you got any uh, questions or comments, leave them below. I hope I didn't, you know, bore you too much here. Um, just about done with this stack of boxes here. I just find it goes a lot faster when I stack them up like this to paint them with a roller. Okay, take care. Done.